After most wanted success, it was obvious we were getting a sequel. The only question was, how good is it going to be? It's been almost 16 years since its official release, and I can safely say, it is pretty damn good. Carbon picks up the story after the events of Most Wanted, with the protagonist cruising into the mysterious place called Pama City. Then we see a flashback, in which there is a young lady telling us to start up the engine, a dude who looks like a burglar from Home Alone. Then it casts to the starting line, where the girl from two seconds ago shows the price of the race. A very nice red bag. <laughs> yeah, these guys are racing for a freaking $20 bag from Walmart. Just let that sink in for a second. Eventually the race starts. Whoever gets the most penalty points on their driving license wins. But oh no, our opponents get chugged, just like in Revolt. And this whole event is now busted. In the last second we secure the bag and escape through the alley in a very suspicious way. Two questions come to my mind. First, why didn't we get chugged as well? Second, who helped us to escape? The bag was filled with random parking tickets. Oh, there were supposed to be money in it. I see. Anyway, we can hear the burglar dude speaking as we are leaving the city. Take my car, go, get out of here. Then the flashback ends and uh oh, it's Cross. And he's trying to bust our heroes as once again. Guess who's back? To sum it up, the events in the flashback happened prior to Most Wanted. And what's happening now is obviously after Most Wanted. The only thing missing is how much time actually passed between each major segment. Nolan, my dude. Interstellar has got nothing on this game. We end up crashing the beamer, and Cross is rushing to greet our hero. Sit down! How you been? To be honest, I kinda missed him. But from absolutely nowhere, a bunch of very serious dudes appear. I don't remember asking for your help, Croc. It's Cross. Oh, look who he have got here. So this fella's name is actually Darius. He's the big boss now. And since he were busted in his territory, he simply pays off Cross. Because Cross is a bounty hunter now, apparently. God. He really ruined his career over a street racer. Now we are owning Darius some serious cash. And to clear the debt, we need to defeat the other crews and claim their territory in Pama City. And guess who are the regional bosses? The losers who got busted a couple of years ago. Oh, and Darius is dating our ex-girlfriend, Nikki. Just to make things a bit more complicated. Nikki takes us to Navul, alias Eugene from The Walking Dead. I'm the monkey! And after choosing the car with the sweet rims, we hop into a tutorial segment to master the wingman controls. Wingman can be brought into most races. There are three types of them. Drafters, scouts and blockers. Coke blockers. Come on, that's not fair! Jokes aside, I usually pick Navul. He might look as a funny, easygoing guy, but when he's behind the wheels, he turns into a complete psychopath. Oh, coffee grinder, baby! <laughs> we lose the heat and meet up with him at the safe house. Here we create a crew to start taking over the nearby areas. The first dude I picked to mess with is Wolf, the off-brand Inspector Gadget driving a DB9. As we progress, Nikki checks on us from time to time. Sometimes she comes to say hi with Frodo. Hi, I'm a big fan. Other times she's starting to question Darius's actions. After claiming Wolf's areas, he accepts the challenge. Just to get smoked by a stock Alfa Romeo. Sorry man, it's mine now. When we are done with each bosses, we unlock new members from the other gangs. Along with their perspective on the night we took off. First of all we meet Detective Colin. He tells us that the bags were switched on that special night. Other than that he just stands still blinking, like he's trying to blend in with the wall. Very... cool? I guess? Upon hearing this info, we meet Nikki to put the story together, and she asks the most important question ever. Why didn't you ever tell me about the missing money? Because I'm mute? You know. The next boss is Angie, whose in-game model is just off compared to the cinematics. It's like a totally different person. Since she drives a charger in the canyon race, we can just simply overtake her and that's pretty much it. Bye! The new member we unlock is Samsung. He says he is the best and he can beat everyone. EVERYONE! Oh, and he also shares some info. The dude who helped us to escape back then was surprisingly a cop. 
Interesting. Now we only have to take out this Kenji guy. I wanted to go easy on him because he has enough problems. You know, owning a rotary. It's your last chance to face reality and back off. Okay, kid. Wanna play like this? Let me just change the camera setting. Oh no, are you falling down the cliff? That's gonna be a PTSD for the rest of your life, kid. The last piece of the night is provided by Yumi. The whole race was a setup to let us escape with the switched bag. So the question is... Were those really P90s with silencers acting like it was some kind of electric gun? Come on, man. What is this bullshit? And who could have planned all this? I'm thinking it was Frodo, by the way. He had all the intentions after those shitty movies. But no, it was Darius the whole time. And he used us again to do the dirty job for him by defeating those idiots. And now he just cashes us out. Mr. Crawl! Why he keeps mispronouncing his name? It's so disrespectful. It's cross. Hey, my nose! My nose! Surprise, surprise. Nikki comes in saving the day. She made a secret deal with Cross. And now we are free to go. He could have been the perfect Boba Fett. Just a bounty hunter. His character arc is kinda sad though. He ruined his life pursuing us. Then he just lets us go without any final redemption. Just like the ending of Last of Us 2. But it's actually good. Now that Nikki believes us, she joins our crew and even races with us. While on the other hand, Darius hired those he wanted to eliminate in the first place. Also, it's pretty goofy that he doesn't even look at us when he's talking. Just like an edgy anime character. But it's still not as cringe as his little intro, where he acts like he's trying to steal our nose by taking a fat shit. First, we claim Darius' territory, then we need to take out his so-called team one by one and we can finally face him. You know I spent that money that you got framed for? How about Nikki everything that you couldn't? You fucking simp. You did all of this because you wanted to get laid. Not disappointing. This dude, I can't believe what I'm hearing. He's a certified psycho, no doubt. Beating him in a circuit race means we can head to the canyon. And uh, No one can touch me. Yeah, Nikki told me that. Well, it was underwhelming. In the end, Darius hands over his R8 and gives his final monologue. Enjoy. Nah, man. Just pack it up and go home. It's over. He hops in a car, leaving Palmon City behind, while our hero is now dating Nikki again. Hold up a sec. Was that a jack? And more importantly, was everything just a dream? Nolan? <laughs>